As you know, uh, this prize uh, was established practically 20 years ago by Sonia Reitz's job, a poet, translator, and critic. And this, prizes, this prize recognizes outstanding translations of modern Italian poetry into English. Uh, Sonia died uh, precisely 20 years ago, so in somehow I feel even more pleased and moved to present the winner of this edition. And also, I'm very happy to be here. This is the very first time that I see so many American poets. Two of them I have translated into, in, into Italian some poems. I see, I met uh, Robert Haas after 20, 22, 24 years. We met in Fano, Italy, where there was an important uh, international festival on poetry 23, 24 years ago. And I also translated Edward Hirsch about five or six poems, uh, more or less in the same period. So I'm very happy to be here. Luigi Bonafini is a, a great translator, and I am very, very pleased to present him. I believe, in my opinion, he is one of the best, perhaps the best translator of Italian literature. I say this because his interest is not only on 20th century Italian poetry. He has translated incredible, important poets, such as Dino Campana, Pierpaolo Pasolini, Mario Luzzi, especially Mario Luzzi. He was also a great friend of uh, Mario Luzzi. I remember some years ago, we celebrated uh, Mario Luzzi's poetry, and there was a beautiful uh, testimony by Luigi Bonafini about not only his translation of Mario Luzzi, but also about the exchange of ideas, about translation, and the visit that he paid in uh, Tuscany uh, to uh, Mario Luzzi. The book that he has translated recently is indeed of equal importance. It belongs to an incredible, extraordinary Italian poet, Attilio Bertolucci, I'm sure that you heard more his son, Bernardo Bertolucci, right? <laughs> the great uh, film director. But anyway, his father, Attilio Bertolucci, uh, was a, a very important Italian poet in the Italian uh, history, Italian literature history. And the book that uh, Luigi Bonafini has translated is titled La Camera da Letto as a symbolical place, the bedroom of birth, of making love, but also a kind of a place where generations of a family uh, alternate one after another. So this book, uh, which won uh, important prizes in Italy, among them the Viareggio Prize, is considered a masterpiece. And by the way, it's also a huge book. <laughs> It took years for Luigi Bonafini to translate uh, this book, which in, Ita which in English uh, uh, is titled uh, The Bedroom. Um, but Luigi Bonafini has made possible and visible into English also many important uh, dialect, neo-dialect Italian poets, which were totally, I think, not published in, in, uh, in English. And so this is uh, another incredible achievement that he has done in the, during his career. He's a professor of Italian, top professor of Italian literature, language and literature at CUNY, uh, Brooklyn College. And he is also the editor of a journal totally dedicated to translation, the Journal of Italian Translation. Uh, let me conclude just with a little statement that um, conclude a, a short article that I'm going to present shortly at uh, the Italian Cultural Institute in uh, Manhattan. And uh, I conclude my intervention, which I will do on uh, October 27th. American readers owe a great debt to Luigi Bonafini for his <laughs> astonishing achievement in translating La Camera da Letto by Attilio Bertolucci. He was able not only to reproduce 
in English, the variegated waves of the imaginative rhythms and plastic energy of Bertolucci's versification, but also to underscore the epic vastness of his inspiration, a vastness which the American reader will ideally link for it, its inner elective affinities to such great masters of English poetry as Wordsworth, Whitman, and Frost. Thank you, Luigi. And thank you uh, to the Academy for this great honor. Um, as Luigi has said, the bedroom is, is, uh, uh, is one of the really important books of 20th century Italian literature. It's, it's a very, it's a unique book. It's a unique book because it's not a book of poems. It's a narrative, long narrative poem about his family. Uh, and as Luigi said, the bedroom is the place where everything happens, of so birth and death and love. And uh, I had chosen <coughs> actually two, so no poems, but two excerpts uh, from the book, one on birth and one on death. But I think I'll have time just for the first one and forget about the death. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and it's actually about, it, it's entitled The Candle and the Child. And the child is Attilio Bertolucci, and Maria is uh, his mother. And it's actually, uh, the whole thing is about the child falling asleep. The candle and the child. Only you, Maria, know the beating of this 28-day-old heart, so frequent that you withdraw your hand bewildered at the tender prison that encloses it, that ended by chance unknowingly encroached on the frenzied area of its incessant hammering, while you absent-mindedly, lovingly looked after the toilette that precedes a child's sleep, its apparent death, to be laid down neatly in the tamer tangle of fragrant, fragrant cloths and laces that a windy and sunny day may have refreshed throughout the house. None of the children, not the beloved firstborn Elsa, nor those two who met with a very precocious death, whose names even you get mixed up, and not even Hugo, born sickly, but now on his way to a studious childhood, a quiet adolescence, upset you as much as this one, during the many hours left for you and him in that room whose main purpose is the married couple's sin, but soon becomes an accomplice in a love that will never find rest upon this earth. Now it seems time to you, while he's clothed, with his closed eyes and slower breathing, is going where you cannot follow him as you leave, to raise the candle that burns at some distance from him and makes the eyelids reverberate with suns that will, be, will come to the scholar of the wisteria to tinge the roses during the years at Antoniano. Time to go down where the last energy of the day converges from every, everywhere with the imminent supper. But the shadows have not entirely abandoned the walls where they hide to take possession of the room and it's only surviving and so defenseless inhabitant, so that he, annoyed with his tiny hands, removes them from his eyes. Open, awake, they meet yours, smiling from an occasion too cherished to go back, prolong life and love, put off moving to where, beyond the darkness of the stairs and corridors, lights and voices tinkle very close by, my baby no longer reachable. The candle burns its wax slowly to fool the child's sleep with the day's light that's ended, leaving in the shadows the houses and those hedges and trees where now birds are sleeping like humans. The deception has already had an effect. This, undisturbed even by the hard and sharp rap at the door of an old servant's knuckles, is the breathing of one no longer in the room, carried by an infinite current toward an estuary of peace. It no longer matters if the golden leaf of tremulous light shifts and moves away and disappears, allowing the realm of blackness to set in 
and it doesn't matter if Maria gets lost in the cheerfulness of the evening, for the unbroken wave of sleep is coursing through him. Thank you.